launching movements they make with the steering lines. They are showing you the full flight characteristics of the Ram Air Cam. It takes a great deal of concentration to land dead center on the target. The jumper keeps a close eye on the windstock located in the target area. Once on final approach, the jumper then shifts all of his concentration into a small black dot located in the center of the orange X. Ladies and gentlemen, looking high to your right, these parachutes are known as a high performance wing. Cable speeds in excess of 90 miles per hour. These speeds are accomplished by performing a highly dynamic turn, increasing its earthward descent, then flattening its trajectory across the ground at speeds of nearly 100 miles per hour. The United States Army Parachute Team has two demonstration teams. Since the colors of the Army are black and gold, so are the names of our team. The team performing for you today is the Black Demonstration Team. The United States Army Parachute Team was formed in 1959 at the home of the Air Fort Bragg, North Carolina. At that time, the team consisted of 19 original members. Each was selected to assist in the development of modern parachuting techniques, provide world-class competition parachutists, perform live aerial demonstrations in support of Army public relations and recruiting. In 1961, we were designated the Army's official aerial demonstration unit, and one year later, we adopted our nickname, the Golden Knights. As the last of the jumpers remove their equipment and don the distinctive maroon beret of today's modern paratrooper, I would like to introduce the jumpers. But first, performing the difficult duties of ground control from Walkerton, Indiana. He's an airborne explosive ordnance disposal technician with 999 free fall parachute jumps. Sergeant First Class, Corey Rush. Performing the technical task of videographer from Dartmouth, Massachusetts. He's an airborne ranger with 2,660 free fall parachute jumps. Sergeant First Class, Keith Pierce. And now for the jumpers. From Danville, Indiana, he's an airborne infantryman with 1,200. 99 free fall parachute jumps. Staff Sergeant Matthew Gardner. From Marietta, California, he's an airborne wheeled vehicle mechanic with 460 free fall parachute jumps. Staff Sergeant Nahu Ramirez. From Springfield, Missouri. He's a motor transportation operator with 2,339 free fall parachute jumps. Staff Sergeant Logan Maples. From Aurora, Colorado, he's an airborne mortarman with 3,377 free fall parachute jumps. Staff Sergeant Jason Bowder. From Cincinnati, Ohio, he's an airborne ranger with 730 free fall parachute jumps. Sergeant First Class, Danny Hellman. From Walhalla, South Carolina, he's an airborne information technology specialist with 680 free fall parachute jumps. Staff Sergeant Benjamin Hall. From Boston, Massachusetts, he's an airborne infantryman with 2,650 free fall parachute jumps. Sergeant First Class, Roman Grijalva. From Tampa, Florida, he's an airborne ranger with 1,000, 
965 free fall parachute jumps. Sergeant First Class Ryan O'Rourke. From Yuma, Arizona, he's a parachute maintenance technician with 1,262 free fall parachute jumps. Sergeant Nicholas Orozco. From Found Colorado, he's an airborne infantryman with 660 free fall parachute jumps. Staff Sergeant Gabriel Colon. And leading the Golden Knights in free fall, the team leader of the Black Demonstration Team. From Rayford, North Carolina, he's an airborne infantryman with 2,605 free fall parachute jumps. Sergeant First Class, Morgan George. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the Black Demonstration Team for the 2022 Air Show season. All members of your United States Army Parachute Team, the Golden Knights. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our performance for the day. And on behalf of the entire team, I would like to thank each and every one of you for being such a warm and receptive airborne audience. In closing, I leave you with this final thought. In the future, may all your days be prosperous and your nights golden. And a big round of applause for the U.S. Army Golden Knights, Staff Sergeant Corey Jernigan, leading off the first performance of the day and then closing out as the narrator for the second and last performance of the day. Very talented young individual. And the Golden Knights will be back with both of their shows tomorrow as we continue with jet action. And remember, a little break now for you to uh, visit the facilities if you have to. And please don't uh, get mad at me for reminding you about suntan lotion, sunblocker, lip protection, and hydration, especially for the younger children who may not be aware of it as you. Uh, high altitudes, great temperatures, and a breeze will dry you out. We want to... Uh, you know, be as healthy as you possibly can. I want you to be comfortable and enjoy the show in the best of health. And that's why I worry about our great spectators. Yours truly, the host that loves you most, Danny Klitschel. Golden Knights aircraft known as Golden Knight 610. Relatively new aircraft built by the Hamlin of Canada. We're clearing the runway, then we'll go into some jet civilian action. And I'll tell you about a neat guy who was inspired as a little kid in the state of Florida by a pilot of great renown who was flying a mini jet. Who made the mini jet, who discovered it, who designed it, who marketed it. We'll tell you about that. It will tell you about this pilot's quest, despite some disadvantage as a youngster with not learning how to fly, but avoiding the problems of air sickness.
All right, uh, on with the action. You'll pick up the mini jet, low and to your left. Pilot is Tom Larkin, goes, goes by the call sign of Lark. And as a kid, he was afraid of roller coasters. And often got airsick when trying to fly airplanes as a child. You know who had that problem as well? Learning how to fly as a young man? The legendary R.A. Bob Hoover. And he overcame that, as did Tom Larkin, and went on to be famous, as did Tom Larkin. Growing up with RC, or radio-controlled aircraft, started to get first with aerodynamics and aviation with RC aircraft. Later, a great advantage when you fly the full-size aircraft because of your understanding of the control surface movements and requirements of an RC aircraft. So you look out on the runway, you'll see it is a very small jet. It's called the Mini, M-I-N-I -I jet. There's the smoke on. Now it is the first one from the Subsonics Corporation to build aircraft like this in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, which is the home of the Experimental Aircraft Association. And the biggest air show at aviation gathering in the entire world. Well, Tom, as a youngster in Florida, told me he first saw the BD jet. It was flown by a famous author whose aviation books quite often went on to become movies. And he saw that pilot fly the BD mini jet, and it just inspired him to have one one day. Now, the BD jets were used by civilian individuals, solo performances and team performances, and sponsored by various uh, food drive-ins, fast food areas, and or breweries in the country, tremendously popular with the crowd, now relegated to the role, mostly, of simulating joint cruise missiles. Ernie Gann was the pilot that Tom Larkin first saw fly that in Florida, and that sparked him to eventually build his own. Now the jet is only 500 pounds empty. And the engine, the jet engine is mounted on the tap of the fuselage towards the rear. And you say, well, that jet blast is going to flutter the tail. Well, you'll see maybe on takeoff, you noted it has a V tail, much like a Beechcraft Bonanza. So the jet blast, which I'm going to tell you about, has no disruptive forces on the tail of the aircraft, all brought into the design of the aircraft. Tom Larkin started to take flying lessons at age 19. There is the mini jet. Received a degree in aerospace engineering from Georgia Tech. Entered the Air Force pilot training in 84. He was a T-38 instructor and progressed, get this, to the mighty F-15 Charlie model. Flew in Operation Northern Watch and provide comfort. Selected as an instructor for the Air Force lead-in school in the AT-38. Resides in Denver, Colorado. Currently a pilot instructor and evaluator on the 737 from Nature Airline. Married for 30 years, a set of twins who Tom says are thankfully out of college and on their own. So you see the small size of the airplane, hence the name the Mini Jet. The thrust for all of you air show fans is only 258 pounds. Now, that's not uh, a missed number. That's all it takes to get the airplane up to 300 miles an hour. It is an engine that came off of a very small drone. But because of the size of the airplane, the lightweight, and the skill of Tom Larkin, it can do maneuvers like this. With a perfect blue sky, this is Tom Larkin drawing out a maneuver we call the Cuban 8. It's a figure 8 drawn by the smoke of the airplane, with a figure 8 laying on its side. It consists of a 5 eighths of a loop on the left side, 5 eighths of a loop on the right side. He's going to come down and match up the smoke right about in here, and the figure 8 is in the sky. Invented by accident by Lynn Colby in Miami, Florida, 
1946, who was the chief aerobatic instructor for Juan Batista in the Cuban Air Force. And named after that great individual, from that day to this, despite our strained relations with that country's dictator. Tom Larkin, our pilot in the mini jet, fulfilling a dream as most pilots do. Now he'll go for the aircraft in the hairpin turnaround. That'll have him required to do a quarter turn, which he did back off in the original direction of flight. The engine is called the PBS TJ engine. It's built in the Czech Republic, capable, as I mentioned, of a mere 258 pounds of thrust. He'll burn 40 gallons during this performance. Hey, by the way, there is no paint on the airplane as he does the four point precision hesitation roll. This is an airplane that is wrapped. Absolutely no paint on the airplane. Wrapped in vinyl covering, similar to show cars. In addition to the performance, you can see that as a jet, because of its agility, he can keep it in close and tight. Watch as Tom goes to the top of this loop, he'll roll the aircraft, Upside down to upside down and close in the loop. Our pilot John has flown over 9,000 hours, 57 different types of aircraft, and fulfilling a dream. By the way, as I mentioned, this was the first of the aircraft, the jet mini aircraft to come from the subsonics factory. 1,000 pounds lighter, 60 miles an hour faster than an Indy car. <laughs> the engine itself, <laughs> if you needed to do an engine change, you could wait till the engine cooled down, unbolt it from the top of the fuselage, and with one person could carry it to a workbench or work area. You wouldn't need a hoist, you wouldn't need two individuals, although it would be easier. It is just over 40 pounds. With his extensive military background, Tom Larkin, our pilot, did all of the extensive testing on the subsonic line of aircraft for the factory in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Very high rate of roll for the double roll. This one highly modified for air shows, as you might imagine. For you pilots that care, stress to plus six times the force of gravity and negative three times the force of gravity. And it is the only performer flying air shows in this type of aircraft in the world today. So another unique feature. These are facts, they are not just boasts. Watch for Tom to do the uh, traffic circle in the sky. A lot of cities have converted to those traffic signals for trying to keep traffic moving at a busy, busy intersection. Well, Tom gets around uh, the go around once, now the traffic's coming from the left, so he'll have to watch the traffic on his left. He's got to wait for traffic on his left, the traffic on his right can go, but this guy went out in front of him, and he got completely around the traffic circle, without incident or bumps.
Combination of a 30-year dream. Now as he comes back in, we'll watch for Tom to sit up for the six times the force of gravity turn in a tight 360-degree circle. See that detail? Remember I mentioned to you that it has no problem with that jet engine because the two don't get in each other's way. That is a solid 6G turn, and that is a tight turning radius at the speed that Tom had on. The mini jet, Tom Larkin. Everybody should have it. Okay, take him. Note that it is a vinyl wrap rather than a paint job. Tom Larkin is going to show you that coming in from your right, over your right shoulder. Legally low, relatively slow, with a wingtip on our side pointed down towards the ground. And you can get a photo opportunity. Now as Tom lands the airplane and clears the runway, the airplane you're hearing overhead is Rob Holland, a most accomplished individual. He has got a list of competition victories in North America and around the world unparalleled. Five-time world freestyle champion, 10-time U.S. National Aerobatic Champion, 10-time U.S. National Freestyle Aerobatic Champion, inducted into the Honorary Snowbirds Jet Demonstration Team, three-time recipient of the Charlie Hiller Trophy, Welcome back into the Warriors over the Wasatch Air Show here at Hill Air Force Base. Dan Hawkins and delighted to be joined by Debbie Worthen from KSL 5 in Salt Lake City. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. It's so exciting to be here. Even as I was driving in, I could see kind of the white smoke off of I-15 and getting into town. And I know we talked about this a few minutes ago. I always get a little bit choked up. And I think it's just that sense of patriotism and just the power of what's going on here. Yeah, and you might hear it behind us. It is the sound of freedom. It is the F-35 Lightning II that is getting ready to fire up and delight the crowd. And I know you're excited to see them and the Thunderbirds later. Oh, absolutely. So tell us about the F-35 because this really is a very cool plane. Yeah, it is. It's a, We had uh, Major Wolf on earlier, Beowulf. She's the commander of the F-35 demo team. It is a 9G-capable, multi-role fighter, stealth situational awareness i mean it is the most advanced fighter jet in the world along with the f-22 raptor as you hear some pyrotechnics behind us yeah what are we hearing uh that's just some pyrotechnics i think one of the acts that was just up in the air the the sonex demo uh looks like they just fired off some pyrotechnics you see it there uh on the screen debbie but but uh, these kind of acts have been going on all day long get a sight there now, we all watch things kind of just in the background of what's going on here at L Air Hill Air Force Base all the time. 
but this is the first time in a few years that the public has been able to come back out here and really get a taste for what's going on here. Tell us about that because the pandemic, just like a lot of other events that were canceled, it really canceled the events that happened here for the public to watch. Yeah, you know, this is the first time in four years that this air show has taken place. And, and what a lot of people might not know about how air shows are, are put together is uh, a lot of these acts have to be booked two years in advance. Wow. And so, you know, you end up having to cancel because of the pandemic. Scheduling, uh, a reschedule can be difficult. So, you know, most of the air shows that got canceled because of COVID-19 just didn't ever happen. And so a lot of places, their air shows have had this kind of four-year break or three-year break in between air shows. So as I was getting a ride from the media staging area, uh, I was talking to the gentleman, and he said, you know, if, if a few years ago we had 600,000 people, if that number was accurate a few years ago, it's higher than that this time. Oh, it is. This crowd is like max capacity. It's bursting at the seams. But having said all that is, wow, you could really hear that, right? You felt that. Oh, yeah, I felt it. What was so <laughs> cool, too, is there are so many places to watch. So people still want to head up. You don't have to come right here to the base. You can go all these surrounding areas. It was almost like when people set up for a parade, you know, and they, they just set out their chairs on the grass to kind of get things going and to watch what's happening. Look at that crowd. Wow. I mean, back. And, you know, the weather has cooled slightly. I mean, it's still hot. Don't get me wrong. But it could be 100 degrees. It's not. We're in the 80s today, which is pretty perfect for the air show. Uh, and it hasn't deterred the crowd no. in any way, shape, or form either. This is fabulous as you get a, the sights there of the crowd taking in the air show as they get ready for the F-35. And I didn't realize there was going to be so many pyrotechnics in this no, uh, particular demo. I love demo. it. I love it. This is a great way to spend a Saturday. Now, hundreds of thousands of people coming onto Hill Air Force Base to watch this. There is a ton of work that goes into an event like this. Why does Hill Air Force Base do it? What What is the reason for all of this? Well, obviously, I think first and foremost, you know, it's to demonstrate to the American population, you know, the might of the American military, in particular the Air and Space Forces, you know, and their abilities to fly, fight, and win. And you're going to see all of that uh, on display, as you see there, the F-35 oh, Lightning II. Wow. Uh, that's Major Kristen Bale Wolf. Now, do is, we need a moment of silence? Yeah, we really do. She's taxiing out uh, to get ready for her performance, but that is going to be a sight to behold. And you know what is just so impressive about this is this is one of those planes. I can't even imagine being able to fly that. And you have a lot of women now who are in the, the armed forces, who are in these amazing roles now. And that has been a shift. Yeah, you know, rated diversity improvement is one of Air Force Chief of Staff General Charles Q. Brown Jr.'s uh, priorities. Right. Uh, they recently, uh, last year, just released a rated diversity uh, improvement strategy. And they are working to put uh, not only women, but just more diverse pilots yeah. of nature. Because, you know, uh, the more diverse of a force that we have, the uh, less group think that we have. You yeah, know, you're bringing right. all that talent to bear um, only makes us better as an Air Force. So yeah. that was a great observation. When I saw the story with her a couple of weeks ago, because we've been talking about this show for a couple of weeks now, that was the first thing that stood out to me because I, I told you, you know, my family, I grew up coming to these shows. My brother's a, a captain for an airline and my dad worked for the airlines growing up. So I mean, really watching these planes was always front and center. We came every time the air show was in place. And so to see a woman flying that, that is just awesome. Yeah. And, you know, it, it really is impressive uh, for anybody to fly these aircraft, but we had major Major Beowulf on earlier this morning. Yeah, she's amazing. And, and her she? passion and oh. love uh, of not only flying, but, you know, service to her nation. Um, I mean, unmatched. So it, really incredible to see. So I'm excited to see her fly. Yeah. Uh, I got to see her a little bit sneak peek yesterday as she flew a practice run. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Matt said this morning, it was kind of just like the, you know, the the appetizer right you know. oh, right <laughs> so yeah so this is going to be the real deal here later but on I, this yeah afternoon. i think it's very neat to see her inspiring a future generation of service members 
Yeah, and, and that's what it's about. Now, you know, you talked about the purpose for air shows. You know, we talked about, you know, demonstrating th the readiness of the U.S. Armed Forces. But it's also about recruiting, right? The next generation of airmen and guardians who are going to serve this great nation are here today at Hill right. Air Force Base. And the looks of wonderment on their faces. I mean, we can see a couple young men and women over it. there. And just the looks on their faces, they are, you know, they're already thinking about aviation and, and getting a passion for it. And, and, and that's a big reason why we would do air shows. Right. Yeah. Oh, people yeah. are clapping now. Oh, I'm so, so excited for this. And we're really, we are really less than 10 minutes away from from seeing that F-35 in the air. So what will we see yeah. once she's in the air? Well, we're actually going to see it because we're going to toss to a package right now that shows you a little bit more about the F-35 demo team. The inverted pass is always my favorite. You don't have to understand the lingo to know that this upside down 300 feet above the ground is pretty amazing. And as awe-inspiring as it may look from the ground, it's just as awe-inspiring to the pilot in the cockpit. All of that mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering that goes into make, making this airplane fly, that technology, the fact that they can put that into an airplane that can go, you know, 1.6 Mach, pull 9 Gs, and drop bombs is, is super awesome. Major Kristen Wolf, call sign Bayo, is the pilot and commander for the F-35A Lightning II demo team. Her job is to show off just how incredible her plane is to the entire world. And it's the latest and greatest technology inside of it. The Lightning II is the world's most advanced fighter jet. And Bayo Wolf and her team are happy to finally get to show it off in front of the hometown crowd. This is obviously our home base. We've been here since 2019. We started practicing. Skip the 2020 air show. So we're really excited just to get everybody out, especially the local community, onto the base just to see this airplane, the Thunderbirds. Uh, and it's going to be a huge lineup that weekend. So... Uh, we're really excited to put on a show. And what you'll see in the air won't just be some simple air show tricks. Bayo puts the jet to the test each and every time she gets inside. It is pretty aggressive flying. You're max performing the airplane, so a lot of Gs, a lot of strenuous maneuvers. Proving her plane is more than ready to take on any enemy. We don't modify the airplanes, paint them, take out any sensors, anything. Like this airplane could go to war tomorrow with bombs in it, and some of them come back from war, we fly them in demos. So uh, it's pretty important to share that combat capability. Showing off the might of our military, and inspiring the next generation of airmen and women, just one of the many goals of the demo team and the warriors over the Wasatch Air Show. It gives people outside of the fence the opportunity to come on the base and see what their neighbors do, see what goes on here at the base. It's not just about flying the aircraft, but it's about maintaining them and all the multiple things that they do here at Hill. That's why it's called an open house. It's really to invite those people in and say, look, here's what we do do this because we protect our country each and every day, and this is how we do that. And it just so happens that protecting our country... 40,000 pounds of dust are riding down the runway and then raising around uh, 300 feet off the ground. ...also puts on quite a show. So, just a little sneak preview there yeah. from Beowulf, and, and uh, I think I recognize the voice on yes. that package. It sounded strangely familiar. <laughs> yes, yes. I was so excited when I got to cover that a few weeks ago. Now, how long has she trained to be flying the F-35? Like, what kind of, of time commitment does a pilot have when they're at her level of that expertise? Uh, yeah, no, it's it's pilot training is a very long process. Uh, in fact, uh, typical pilot training uh, lasts approximately a year just to, to learn the basics, to earn your pilot's wings in the Air Force. Right. And so you spend that year. Um, there's a lot of things going on in that world, pilot training transformation, they call it, uh, using technology, virtual reality. So they're right. trying to basically create the same quality pilots that we've always had but using uh, more technology and that so it's really exciting stuff um, but then a lot of times depending on what airframe they're going to fly they go to what's called a B course where they learn to fly that particular airframe uh, Major Wolf who we're going to see in the F-35 today fun fact she actually flew the F-22 Raptor first hmm. so she went and flew that and that takes uh, you know that's usually six months to a year plus upgrade training when you go to your unit I mean it's years in the making right. of you know to make the world's greatest fighter pilot is not an overnight pop process and you know pretty impressive stuff when you realize this person's not only flown the f-22 but they're also now flying the f-35 uh, and a lot of the things that she flies are just capabilities but you know all the pilots that work in the 388 fighter wing here at hill uh, which 
that's where the F-35 demo team falls in. They're all pilots of that caliber. Wow. So to be chosen as the, the demo team pilot, though, a huge honor. And so exciting stuff to see her. And she's going to be taken to the air here in just a few minutes. It's good we know what's going on. It would be a little scary. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I, that caught Debbie by surprise. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And, you know, generally when we see black smoke like that, there is a real problem. <laughs> but since we know that that's not the case right now, that's a lot of fun. All right. So those F-35 pilots, and, and uh, are they the pilots that go into combat? Uh, yeah, so the, the, so the ones F3, that are training here, they go into combat. Well, that's an operational F-35 wing here, the 388 fighter wing. That That is an operational F-35 unit. So uh, any of these pilots uh, have the potential, uh, you know, to deploy, to fly, fight, and win, uh, you know, in, in a contested environment. So, you know, what, what the men and women at Hill Air Force Base do across the specialties, uh, you know, is contributing to the readiness of the United States. States Air Force and Space Force um, to do their respective missions. Uh, it, it's it's really impressive to see. I mean, the dedication uh, of these men and women to the mission every single day. Um, it takes a lot, as you might imagine. I mean, this is a small city at Hill. We talked about that yeah, off air a little right, bit, but, right. but I mean. This is like, uh, you know, there's so much that happens here from the 75th Air Base Wing who kind of takes care of the city mm -hmm. uh, to the mission partners who kind of are like the business owners right. who, who handle working those operational aspects of the mission. A lot to see here uh, every day. And so a lot of people probably drive by and maybe see some airplanes in the air every now and then. But there's a lot happening. Yeah, here. there is. And we know that it, it is a huge economic impact to our area as well, which we really, really appreciate. Yeah. In fact, Kevin Ireland, who's the uh, director of the Utah Air Show Foundation. He was on with me and Matt earlier, and he said uh, each just the air shows itself oh. brings around a fifty million dollar impact to the to the local surrounding communities. All these people have got to eat somewhere, don't they? <laughs> I mean, but that's just a staggering number, it is. right? That's, that's incredible. That's really it's great. great for the for the people uh, of the of this area, the the business owners, uh, etc. And so you get a great replay there right. of the, the smoke show there uh, on that aircraft. That's the Sonics. That's this was probably impressive. the original definition of smoke show. <laughs> 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 you know, because now we hear it like someone's super hot. Oh, there's a smoke show. You know, this was probably the original definition of this. So uh, here we go. So the F-35 should be taxied soon as we s we're still on the replay. That's pretty cool stuff there. This is so much fun. It is. It uh, is. It's a lot and, of fun. And, and you can feel the anticipation building. We have, we have a, from our vantage point, we have a good view of the crowd, and they're just, like, looking up there like, when's that F-35 taking off? they are. And you know what? We just caught a little bit of a breeze. I'm sure everyone is loving that. Yeah. It's nice and cool. Look at those crowds. Yeah. I think it's so fun to see the crowds get together for such an amazing event. I mean, there's just a sense of patriotism, there's a sense of camaraderie when we're watching something like this take place. And not just take place, but take place live right here in our community. Yeah, and especially now, you know, at, you know, kind of post-pandemic, uh, you know, to see crowds of this size, it just, you know, it still takes a little bit to get used to, but it's awesome to see. Uh, this is pretty incredible. Uh, stuff here and so we're still uh, waiting we were going to have uh, Colonel Anderley of the 388th fighter wing stop by he might have the chance to stop by later but as you might imagine he, he might be busy. busy yes yeah, you know yes you know, there's, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, you know, just hanging out. So he might be busy. Yeah. So he is actually over about 2,000 of the personnel that work on, yeah. on the F-35 here, right? Yeah. And six squadrons make up that wing. And uh, the Utah Test and Training Range, which is a 3.2 million. I didn't realize it was this big. 3.2 you know, million either. acres right, when in I the just West saw Desert. That. Right. Right. Yeah. That. Yeah, and that's cool. Sometimes, you know, we'll hear, oh, they're going to be having training in the West Desert, so we'll be prepared for some of what's going on. But it is very cool to see it happening right here. Yeah, so they do a lot of operational tests and evaluations of weapons. Uh, and obviously, they need that kind of large area uh, just from a safety perspective. Uh, really super important there. It's, what what a cool looking airplane, and, though. And, you like, know, it almost looks like a bug from the front, doesn't it? It, it does. Yeah. It does. It's, 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 Get a look there. He's waving to the crowd. Awesome. You know, th that is 
one thing that's really fun about this is just the showcasing and the showmanship of what's happening out here today. And, you know, we talk all the time in the newsroom when you have a good story or when you when we're trying to determine what kind of time something is going to get, we always say, like, well, let the content dictate the coverage. You know, and, I mean, when you have this kind of content that we're seeing here today, I mean, there's a reason we're on for hours. And piloting Sonics is Rob Holland. He's a veteran of the uh, air show circuit, uh, widely world-renowned pilot, so pretty impressive stuff. And did you see? I don't know if you saw it, I but the I little did. sneak preview I down at the, the end of the runway. So what, what can we expect to see when she starts flying that F-35? Yeah, so what you're really going to see is... Uh, Look at that. It looks like a movie. It does. It looks like a movie. It's not as live. I know. So we're not going to say what movie, but it looks like a movie. <laughs> but I will say you're going to see 18 minutes of really, from a, a capabilities perspective, what the power of an F-35 is. So keep in mind that just because an aircraft has certain capabilities... They may not use those in an operation or whatever. So the the whole intent of showing the F-35 is just to show what it's capable of. And and it, it's pretty amazing stuff. No, that's absolutely right. And for a pilot like her that is so uh, skilled, her expertise is just off the charts. What will she be? What's going through her mind as she's starting to fly this today? Yeah, I think it's just... You know, she told us this morning, actually, you know, like they follow really, you know, just from a safety perspective, you know, they have a a script that's tightly, uh, you know, monitored and followed. She's talking to a pilot on the ground. There you see her taking off here for the start of the F-35 demonstration. So we're about to get to the good stuff here. So she's going to fly out and around. There you go. She's going straight up. So she's already pulling some G's. So this is this is where the the camera crew really makes their money trying to follow <laughs> follow that. But look at that. Isn't that a beautiful it sight? It is beautiful. Wow. So the F-35 capable of what, 9 Gs? Is that what you told me? 9 Gs. Which it was like, what if you're the person flying that plane? So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like I, around 1,500 pounds on your chest. Wow. I mean, and I don't even know that you could even imagine that, right? Like that yeah. doesn't even seem a ma- – like I couldn't make that up if I tried. No, that's true. Yeah, so – Pretty amazing stuff here. And what, what's incredible is they have to have the skills to fly the plane, but they also have to be in just tip-top physical shape, don't they? Yeah, and that's a huge part. And that's something that they embed right at the start when they're in pilot training, down in air education and training command, understanding that it's not just getting in an airplane and flying. <laughs> Got a little afterburner right there. Love it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a I don't have the stats right in front of me, but that's a lot of thrust and torque going on right there. Uh you know, I'm sure uh, uh any pilot out there in the crowd is definitely appreciating that right now. But but yeah, getting back to what you talked about with physical performance, like you know, they have to get the proper nutrition. They yeah. have to sleep. They're like high-performance athletes. They're world-class athletes. They are. They're the yeah. best in the world mm-hmm. at, at what they do. And you think about, you know, the jazz there in Salt Lake City. You know, like Donovan Mitchell has to get ready for every single game and, and be ready to rock and roll. And that means after a game, he's going home, he's hydrating, he's sleeping. Right. Same thing. You know, when they're about to get in this cockpit, they got to be at their highest potential, um, you know, to fly this plane at the very limits of its capability. So, so that was cool. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for lack of a better adjective, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. That was cool. Uh, or that was fire. I don't yeah. know. Is that what the kids say now? So <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Oh, man, that was awesome. But... Yeah, it's it's pretty impressive to see, you know, how, I mean, think of the focus that you have to yeah. have, you know, and that's why the Air Force has such a need for people who are interested in STEM, you know, science, technology, oh, right. uh, engineering, and math, because think of all the things, the calculations that she is constantly running in her head. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
I mean, this plane goes to Mach 1.6. I mean, 1,200 miles an hour. That's insane. That's I'm, I'm glad incredible. we're telling you what that is, how fast, because <laughs> I, you know, I didn't actually know. <laughs> yeah, no, I had to look. I looked up Mach, and that, and that was like, they said, it was like, anything over 750 miles an hour is, is bra basically breaking the sound barrier. So, you know, pretty impressive. I mean... I, I can't even imagine. No. I mean, she's not breaking the sound barrier right now, but she's going really fast. Yeah, so, it, you know, we've talked a little bit about it, but the stealth aspects of this are, are just incredible. And, you know, when it comes to... Uh, strategic competition against you know our nation's adversaries like russia china you know this is the kind of technology and right. capability uh that allows us to stay mm -hmm. the superpower that the united states is and and to be able to fly fight and win so i mean it, it's just incredible um you know there there's nobody in the world who can match these kind of capabilities no it's true so the air force's premier fighter jet that's the F-35 Lightning, right? Yeah. That's what we call it. Okay. It says high impact, maximum velocity, seat of your pants, thrill ride for all ages. <laughs> 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 Although very few people actually get to go inside. So this magnificent multi-role stealth combat aircraft is by far, and this is kind of what we've been talking about, the most superior fighter jet the world has ever laid eyes on. The F-35 is the first operational supersonic fighter jet capable of reaching 1.6 Mach. What does supersonic fighter mean? Well, you're breaking the sound barrier. Okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah she's, she's, not, she's not, I don't know how close she is to breaking the sound barrier today. Uh, you know, usually, uh, you know, you break a sound barrier, that's, uh, that's going to hurt some people's <laughs> <laughs> well, here. yeah, the booms are a lot of fun, though. Yeah. So Captain Chris and Beowulf from the 388th Fighter Squadron, that's who's flying this right now. And she's right here here, here, <laughs> here at here. Oh, my gosh, help me. She's here. At, she's based at Hill Air Force. Yes. And what makes this unique is, you know, they train here all the time. And you see the F-35 in the skies all the time. This is, as you see her flying, basically inverted. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty cool stuff. But... You know, this is the first time that, you know, they've got to perform in front of the Hill Air Force Base. You know, hometown crowd. Yeah. It's a home game. You know, you it will. is. That's and, cool. and it's like the playoffs. It's the home game, but it's the playoffs. You yeah. know, and we're playing the Golden State Warriors. So it's a big game yeah. and we're going to win. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's super cool. I mean, so a little history, you know, the F-35 demo team used to be uh, based out of Luke Air Force Base uh, in Arizona, which is the command that I actually work in, in Air Education and Training Command. Uh, and they didn't move to Hill until 20. 2019, of course, but then what happened in 2020, you right. had the pandemic, and so that Hill Air Show was canceled. So, um, you know, I, I don't have the data on when's the last time the F-35 uh, demo team flew actually at the Hill Air Show, but it's probably been a while. Yeah, so super cool. Super cool. It is just, it is such a spectacle. Yeah. We can't even keep up with it. <laughs> and you said these planes now are so sophisticated that in combat, if the pilot was it was to pass out or something went wrong, then the computer system in these planes can take over for a time. Yeah, that was that was super crowd. Did not know that. Uh, Bayo Wolf told us that this morning. Uh, so. She's giving us some nice afterburners today, for <laughs> sure. She's letting us know I'm here. Uh, so, I mean, just that sound alone, is that not, in, I mean, I'm intimidated. <laughs> like, that's just, uh, you know. You can feel it. But inspired at the same time. It's so cool. What are these planes used for? You know, basically, you know, air-to-air -air dominance. I mean, you know, oh, I'd love how you worded that. Air yeah. dominance. You know, because ultimately, at the end of the day, right? If 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 we're in combat, we want to dominate the adversary, and that's you know what these planes are designed for.
I mean, nobody in the world wants to take on an F-22 Raptor or uh, an F-35. You just don't want to do it. It's going to be a bad day. (laughs) You know? Yeah. I mean, and that's what these planes are built for. It's pretty pretty awesome to see it up close and personal. Uh, You know, and again, you know, this is... You know, defending America is not a uh, cheap proposition in, in terms of, you know, it, it, it's a lot uh, to fund America's military. So, you know, showing the uh, American taxpayer, you know, what what that money is used for, that's also part of the reason uh, that we have these air shows. Yeah, no, that's true. And I think we've seen over the last a couple of months, really since what's been happening overseas is how important it is to have an incredible defense system in place. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it, we live in today's national security environment is, is probably as dynamic and, uh, you know, contentious as it's ever been. And, mm-hmm. you know, the Air Force has to stay ready. And that's what these pilots do every day at Hill Air Force Base. When you see them here in the local area and they're flying around, they're staying ready for tomorrow's high-end fight against yeah. adversaries like China yeah. and Russia or whoever mm-hmm. uh, might be our adversaries. And, uh, you know, that's why it, it, it's just such an honor for me to, you know, work for the Air Force, mm-hmm. but also just incredible that we get to share it with, you know, everybody that lives here. She's uh, just went by with the slow pass, and now she's going to go to a vertical climb. Okay, and you know, here's the thing. This is probably the first time many of these people have ever seen in person an F-35. Yeah. I mean, I think it might be my first time as well. It is so incredible to see this. Yeah, uh, look at that shot. Great shot from our crew. (laughs) Wow. It doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, it is a huge crew working to put this show on, and wow, what a show it is. Oh, my gosh. You talk about the readiness of the Air Force, and, you know, when you find out you need to get ready is when it's too late. That's why the U.S. is always always doing this. That's why this is such an operation, 24-7, 365, here at Hill Air Force Base. Yeah, you you can't just, you know, uh, as you get another great look at Major Wolf really demonstrating the flexibility of that airplane. Right. I mean, look how agile that is. I mean, it, it's just poetry in motion right it there. Is. It is. I mean, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, should I be talking? Because it's just so beautiful. Maybe I should just be quiet. <laughs> it is absolutely amazing to watch. Yeah, it really is. But, you know, you talked about the readiness. Readiness is not just something you can do between 9 and 5, you know, every day. Like, it, it requires nights. It requires weekends. You know, it requires deployments away from home by the men and women who uh, work uh, across the Department of Defense uh, to ensure, you know, America's uh, national security interests. And so here we see the P-51 Mustang and the... F-35 joining forces, the P-51 from the Korean War era. Uh, that is that And that is was state of the art at the time, wasn't it? It really was. Yeah. It really was. And it's still cool to see these fly- planes flying. Fun fact, the pilot, Steve Hinton Jr., that's flying the P-51 Mustang today there with, with Major Wolf, um, his dad actually flew the P-51 in the Super Bowl flyo that Major Wolf took part in back in February. Oh, so wow. kind of a cool fun fact there. So, yeah, the, the Hinton family, a uh, long time on the uh, air show circuit. That's and, so fun. And flying the, you know, American Heritage Classics right. there, uh, like the P-51 Mustang. And that really shows you, I mean, look, and in its day, the P-51 was, was just a beautiful state-of-the-art aircraft. But look how far we've come I now know. with the fifth-generation aircraft. Look at that. There's, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, really. I mean, I just about stood up and saluted right there. So, <laughs> I know. I mean, it's so true. No, it, it is so true. I mean, that, that was awesome. And look at that. I mean, that's Air Force history right That there. is. And just the commitment to excellence is so evident as we're watching these planes fly today. 
Yeah, you know, this is the Air Force's 75th anniversary year. You know, we talk about our theme for this year's air show is innovate, accelerate, and thrive the Air Force at 75. And, and, that, and that's what it is, right? I mean, it takes innovation. It takes that acceleration mindset like, hey, we need to make sure that we stay ahead of our adversaries. Mm -hmm. And that's what you see there uh, with that particular aircraft. Um, you know, otherwise we'd still be flying the P-51s. You're but, right. But it takes that F-35 that you see right there uh, to win tomorrow's fight. Yep. And today's. And the greatest minds. Yep. Yep. And that's why the Air Force needs you. So if, if, if you're passionate about aviation mm -hmm. and you have a background in science, techno you know, engineering, uh, technology, etc., mathematics, you right. know, we need you, mm -hmm. you know, like, and you should consider it. And we're actually going to have a guest a little bit later, uh, Don Jessen from the Air Logistics Complex here, um, who's going to talk about ways that you can actually serve your country and you don't even necessarily have to, you know, enlist in the Air Force yeah. to do it. You can actually work as a civilian uh, for the Air Force as well. So I can't wait to talk to Don as well. No, that's one thing I didn't know. I thought, you know, you're all in, but <laughs> you're not in at all. And so that is actually really a, yeah. a great opportunity and a great way to serve the country and make a, a good living doing so. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people don't know that there is a ton of civil service uh, opportunities from a civilian perspective to serve uh, with the United States Air Force. It's, it's part of the, you know, total force concept. Uh, I'm a civilian. Uh, I wore the uniform, but now work for the Air Force as a civilian. Uh, and civilians, in a, in a lot of ways, really provide that foundational of continuity, uh, you know, as airmen rotate in and out, mm -hmm. uh, as you get another great shot of the P-51 Mustang there flying with the F-35 Lightning II, uh, the Heritage Flight Formation two ship there. Uh, just gorgeous. Not a cloud in the sky. Oh, yeah, it's so perfect. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, and yeah. last weekend the weather was garbage. Oh, it was so bad. <laughs> and I was thinking last weekend it's good that we got another week before we have the air show. It was rainy. It was cold. It was it was just not the greatest. Uh, no such problems mm -mm. today in Utah. So, how rewarding is a position with the Air Force? Yeah, it's it's been the honor of my lifetime. I mean, uh, you know. I think for anybody who wears the uniform or, or even civilians that serve, like, you know, knowing that you're contributing to the to the greatest team that you'll ever be on, mm -hmm. uh, there's just something about it. You hear that national anthem or you, you know, see this demonstration of air power. Uh, it really um, just reminds you how lucky you are and, and how privileged you are to, to, you know, help in the defense of this great nation. Yeah, and I love going into the next few weeks with the 4th of July right around the corner because I always feel like we're just so desperate for that that unity, for that patriotism. And, I mean, it's a fun time of year to really focus on that and be part of this show this weekend, which just really sets the stage. And the crowd at Centerline just got a great flyby. That was awesome. Just awesome. Yeah, that was incredible. Yeah, that was incredible. Yeah, and so, I mean, wow. And, you know, typically that 30, I mean, to me, that's a headline act by itself, but we still have. Which is crazy that that's kind of like the opening act, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of? Well, I mean, they're before the Thunderbirds, but I mean, I mean, obviously the United States Air Force Aerial Demonstration Squadron of Thunderbirds, uh, they've been delighting crowds around the world for i mean decades yeah. now and and uh so that that's just so impressive a six ship formation i can't wait um to watch that and and what's great about it is they have that ground show that we're going to see that right. that uh you know it's about a 140 person unit and to make that thunderbirds mission go i mean total team effort but, oh right but uh what the crowd will see is just basically the end result of a lot of hard work yeah isn't that so true and, oh, look. Yes, here it comes, just yep. right overhead. Yep. They, yes, there is no shortage of entertainment here today. Yep. They came up the backside there. And uh, you got to kind of watch for that with the Thunderbirds. I hear, heard they like to be sneaky. Oh, they do, huh? Sometimes. They like to be sneaky. Yeah. So they're going to, you know, they might catch you unawares. So just FYI, I warned you. Oh, yes. I consider <laughs> myself warned. Right. Look at that. Oh, man. What a beauty. And you know what? 
I think maybe this hill community and Ogden community in particular, pretty spoiled because you can walk out your back door and kind of see this like a lot. No, it is so true. Pretty lucky. And look at that that mountain background. I mean, it doesn't get better than that, does it? Yeah, that so is just very cool. I was actually out here in February when we did the Super Bowl broadcast when Major Wolf flew in the Super Bowl formation flyover, and it was snow on the backdrop. And I was like, oh, my God, this is the most beautiful <laughs> thing. And I was like, it can't get any better than this. And then I got here uh, actually two days ago. <laughs> vertical again yep but that backdrop that you mentioned was i was just like oh my god it's, yeah, it's just stunning. as incredible it is in the stunning, isn't it i mean i live in texas there's not really the wasatch mountains <laughs> uh to speak of we take them for granted we forget how amazing that backdrop is yeah. that once in a while we get those views just like we saw and it's an amazing place to live yeah so the F-35 looks like she's uh, bringing out her land, as you see the replay here of the P-51 mm-hmm. uh, Passover with the F-35. But Major Wolf's getting ready to come in for the landing. She's got her landing gear down, so she's going to be coming down. So as a reminder, you can still make it out, but you're starting to run out of time there. Yeah. Uh, as the Oh, look at that. So is this plane still used, or is it just kind of a show plane? Yeah. A nostalgic? Yeah. Okay. And what's really great is the the organizations uh, that that work to keep these historic warbird planes uh, up in the air and flying because, you know, it, it's not easy to find replacement parts <laughs> for a Korean-era right. airplane. It's true. <laughs> so, you know, the, there's a lot of great people and organizations that, that spend a lot of time, uh, energy, and effort, like Steve Hinton and, and his father, um, to make sure that uh, the American public still gets that sense of nostalgia and gets to see these historic warbirds in action. It is very fun to watch that. And, and really, it's kind of the past and the present going into the future when you watch that right next to the F-35. Yeah. You know, where we've been, where we are, and no doubt where we're still going as far as aviation goes. And and really, you know, you think about it like for the next generation of airmen and guardians who might be here at the air show, you know, what might they be flying in 20 years mm-hmm. from now, you know, when they join the Air Force? Um, so pretty and cool. I, and I thought that was interesting when you talk about the, the F-35, how really she's she's showcasing some of the fun stuff today because... If she were in a combat situation, you know, she's not going to be doing the fun tricks. She, she's going to be, you know, defending and, and protecting the country. So it, it's fun that we get to see that, that side of that flight today. Yeah. And you get a good look at the crowd. I, honestly, I don't know how much standing room is available left, right? Left, right. right. Like, uh, as you. She's yeah. touched down there. Oh, yeah, she's touched down. And we are right on the on the front side, really. The bleachers are set up. We have a lot of people. Now, the great thing about this is you get a good view, regardless of if you're a shorty like me, uh, <laughs> because most of it's in the air, you know, so that's really fun to watch. Yeah, so there she yeah. has just landed. What do they say? Not a bad seat in the house. Yeah, it's true. That's for sure. So about an 18-minute flight from her. Yeah. Showing us some of the cool things that that just amazing piece of machinery can do. Yeah. So incredible stuff. She's actually going to taxi and she parks like right over here. So we're going to hear. Uh, we're going to hear. With, yeah. With, with she parks. So uh, pretty cool stuff here. So I know you grew up around here. Right. Come to a lot of air shows. But what do you think of this view so far? No, it's amazing. Now, I will tell you the the thing I was most nervous about today was being hot <laughs> because as a kid i remember it was so hot you know like my dad with and my the brother the ground, they were we just so into all of this and i remember thinking we're okay we're gonna go we're gonna be somewhere we're gonna be all of this uh the great thing is you can bring plenty of water i know they have water refill stations here as well and the weather is not that hot today granted we're in the shade but we're in the 80s and th- this is a great way to spend a saturday and what has been so amazing what a service to the community that a huge event like this, world-class, I mean, really, this is a world-class facility, world-class pilots giving us an amazing show, free to the public. We've been expecting 250,000 to 500,000 people. We think that we've probably hit 
far beyond that already this weekend, and you can see why. You just wonder, is there a guy at the gate with, like, that, you know, that old clicker. school clicker? <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. he's got to be tired by now, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, yes, definitely. When do you just give up? <laughs> right. And really, the, the entire community, there's, you could see this from, from all over. Fun to watch. And as I was getting off the freeway, driving in, I thought, wow, if I if I wasn't coming here today, I would try to find a way to, to get here because you, you saw the flame, the planes and kind of the free fall. It's just like, oh, okay, that's going to be a super cool show. Yeah, so the T-33 is getting ready to, to queue up, to take off. Uh, you know, we've still got a, a few acts. The Thunderbirds uh, will be setting up around 3.30 and they are scheduled right now for a 3.35 uh, start of their show, and that'll last about 45 minutes oh, or wow. so. Wow. So you're going to be in for a treat um, for that air show. As that's a good-looking airplane, too. Again, another older airplane. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so very cool. It's about to take off the T. I believe that's the T-33 as... There's the P-51 as it taxis in from its flight with the F-35. And there, of course, oh. F-35. Yeah. I mean, that just looks cool. <laughs> I mean, I know I've said that like five times, no, but I just does. can't keep, I got to keep saying it because, I mean, and I see the F-35 a lot and, and I'm and still, just, every time I'm like, oh, that's a good looking airplane. Yeah, it just has not lost the novelty, I'm sure. No, no, not Which, at all. you know, I bet if you ask her, how much do you love your job? She would say it beats working for a living. Oh, yeah. I mean, the passion shown through <laughs> this morning when we had the chance to spend some time with her. And, and uh, I think she was on the uh, KSL noon show yesterday yeah. uh, with, with Shira and Dan Spindle were out here. And, and so, you know, she got to spend some time with them as well. So very cool. And, you know, the sense of camaraderie is so amazing because... Even, you know, the, the crew that's helping her land. I mean, you really can see that sense of pride from the top to the bottom and everyone that is involved in this production. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, you know, they like anything else, right, it takes a village. Uh, you know, I always equate to sports. I'm a sports guy. Right. Um, you know, it, you got to have the trainers. You got to have the equipment room guy. You got to have, you know... Uh, everybody in the front office, it's the same way in the yeah. Air Force. You got to have the maintainers. You got to have, um, you know, the people who are doing, uh, you know, fuel and, and right. ammo and, and just even the security forces uh, crew at the gate. Imagine their job today yeah. to make sure the public can come in today. Yeah. It just takes a, an entire team of airmen and guardians uh, to make this mission happen. Yes, maximizing their role. We are miking up someone to get on set right now. Yeah, so it's going to be uh, Don, Don, Don Jessen. Jessen. Yeah. So there it is. We're going to pull up his bio here. We're so glad you could join us. Yes, yeah, so Don Jessen is the Chief of Business Operations. The Air Ogden Logistics Complex employs more than 8,100 military, civilian, and contact personnel here at Hill Air Force Base in 155 different job series. Are you thinking, yes, I knew that. That's why I'm always so busy. <laughs> the majority yes. of the employees are federal civilian employees and not in uniform. They are military service members, however. Jobs range from supply chain, finance, manpower, production, and software, to name a few. So here is Mr. Don Jessen, who is going to talk about how those civilian employees are hired in the Ogden ALC. Thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you for having me. And isn't this beautiful? I'm a little distracted with everything going on in the background. It's awesome to be here. Yeah, we were just talking about, like, how spoiled you must kind of be because... <laughs> You probably see the, an F-35 every day, but it's incredible every single time. Oh, it never gets old. It really never gets old. But yeah. thanks for that introduction. So I'm, I'm glad to talk about hiring. That's one of the things we do here. Um, and we're really looking for that skilled labor workforce. And what does that mean? So uh, we do a lot of the repair, maintenance, and overhaul. It takes a lot to keep these airplanes flying. So we've got, as you mentioned, uh, a little over 8,000 employees. Most of those are civilians. Uh, some of the careers that we're really uh, focusing on right now will be our skilled uh, labor, like aircraft mechanics, sheet metal workers, um, low observable coatings, machinists, uh, that skilled labor. We're really looking for skilled labor, and then we're always looking for science and engineers. 
engineers in, uh, you know, uh, mechanical engineers, structural engineers, our software engineers, and cybersecurity professionals. It really takes a team effort to keep to keep these flying. Yeah, and so, you know, the theme of this year's air show is around innovation and accelerating. Uh, and, and we talked with uh, Miss Sturgeon from the STEM City. Oh, yes. But how, just talk about how important STEM is to the aerospace and, and space worlds. Well, we just barely saw the F-35 uh, fly. It's uh, been rumored to be a, a flying software platform. It takes a lot of software to keep these in the air. So software engineers uh, are, are one of those areas that really, you know, we are hiring as many software engineers as are interested. Wow. And are these are these people who have college degrees already? Does it range? It, it ranges. So I'm a farm boy from Southern Utah. I, I was recruited right out of college in Where Southern about? Utah, uh, near Cedar City. Okay. So I, I came on. Um, it's actually been 23 years ago in June. So I started doing when these. he was like 10. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, become these air shows for a, a little while, but yes, uh, out, out of college, the skilled labor uh, will take out of high school. You know, Air Force does a very good job of training. Uh, I was able to get my master's uh, when I came on board. I graduated from Utah State, but we offer a lot of training programs. Again, skilled labor workforce or professional workforce. And that, that's one of the things I've enjoyed is uh, Air Force has provided me opportunity to get out and see a lot of different bases. Uh, to be able to, to work different areas. I've been able to work in um, you know, supply chain and logistics. Right now I'm in the uh, complex. We uh, focus on maintenance and repair and overhaul of the aircraft, but also base support and acquisition and procurement. So I really like being able to have job stability, be here with my family, but being able to do uh, new and uh, different, uh, different areas of work. And we talked about that, that there's a lot of ways to serve uh, with the armed forces, including the Air Force here at Hill Air Force Base. And one of those is just by being a civilian, you are contributing to the Air Force mission in a very big way. A absolutely. Uh, you know, the mechanics, they're out here on the flight line. They're in, in the hangars here just behind us. So they are providing readiness. They're providing that uh, air power to our nation. What are some of the seemingly little things that make a big difference working with your team? Well, first, it's supporting the mission. It's uh, supporting uh, our nation's defense and providing air power. Uh, second, I'd say it's the people. I work with some really great people who uh, have my back professionally and personal life. But we off offer uh, very competitive wages. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, kind of some of those uh, non-tangible benefits, retirement, uh, paid leave, not many places offer a pension nowadays. Uh, true. Vacation days. I like being able to take you know time off and go uh, be with my family. But some of the other things um, is job stability, uh, as I mentioned too. Uh, as you know, I, I've been here 23 years and I've never had to worry about job stability. And so that's uh, for me that's that's been pretty big. Yeah, and, th and that really matters. So uh, as you look to hire, what are some of the things that you guys do in the local community? Do you guys uh, recruit at like job fairs, or you know, how are you guys out there? If somebody was interested, you know, how how would they learn more? Well, that's a great question, Dan. So. So we try to, yes, we're out there at job fairs. Probably the easiest will be some of our um, job boards. So uh, the easiest will be Hill Air Force Base Recruiting Facebook. And it's on Facebook or uh, airforcecivilioncareers.com. And uh, we're on LinkedIn. Also, if you go to uh, Utah Department of Workforce Services. So any of those job boards, you can get out there. You can see the jobs that are open, see what we're looking for, and just post your resume to one of those job boards. About every two weeks, we go in, we pull those resumes, we review them. And right now, we really are hiring, again, skilled labor and uh, science and engineers is our two big focus areas. And I think it's always so great that there is a career path. You know, this is not a job, it's a career and it, it probably becomes part of who you are as well. Talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. The career path can be, you know, I talked a little bit about uh, horizontal, you know, being able to work supply chain, procurement, or over in the complex. But also there's a lot of areas for promotion here just right at Hill Air Force Base. I like living here. I like to work and play here. But there's also, you know, ability to, to go throughout the Air Force, whatever you'd like to do. But we're... Again, our organization's about 10,000 employees, but there's about 20,000 employees here on Hill Air Force Base, so there is a lot of opportunities. Wow, but I mean, that, that shows you, I mean, that just the ALC alone, if there's 20,000 employees and you have 
close to half. I mean, that's a that's a huge operation. It, it is, and, it, and again, I told you I was a farm boy from Southern Utah. I didn't grow up in the military; was not very familiar. But we are ninety nine percent civilian for our, uh, you know, just for the complex. Uh, we've got about two hundred, uh, you know, enlisted and officers, but. Mainly, we're, we're a civilian workforce. What kind of sense of pride comes with an event like today's event? Oh, it is awesome. I mean, you can probably see the smile on my face. I brought my uh, my son and my daughter here, and it is just really neat to see this. Uh, I guess uh, the community, we get great support from the community. Our community is really behind us, and that means uh, a lot to us as well. But it's just it's just nice to work here. It's great to support the mission and to see the, the you know, support air power. So, you know, we're talking about hiring, and I know, you know, a lot of times in different organizations, it's cyclic, right? Sometimes you're like, oh, man, we have a lot of vacancies, and then, you know, a couple months from now, oh, we're sitting pretty good. So it's a cyclic valley you kind of navigate, but but uh, how, how, you know, uh, invested are you guys in hiring, like, like today, if somebody like, I need a job right now. Well, so in addition just to our normal attrition, we're going to be growing by about 600 people. So in the next few months, we're trying to bring on about 600 people. I don't think we'll get there, but we and are hired. No, let's be optimistic. <laughs> you're going to get there. And what jobs are those? Are those across the board? Okay. And so some of those skilled labor positions, I mean, people just graduated from high school. Now is the time, if you don't have an idea of what the plan is, this would be a great, a great path. High school, or if you're retiring from the Air Force, if you're active duty, retiring, you bring some skills, or if you want to transfer, we'll t you know, take beginning or journeyman level uh, mechanics. Can, can you kind of just maybe expound on that just a little bit in terms of like, you know, especially from a trade perspective, you know, like when you talk about entry level, I mean, how entry level are you willing to take somebody and basically grow them mm -hmm. into what you need them to be? So we're willing to take them right out of high school. And, you know, we have a sheet metal course. Also, we work with uh, Davis Tech, Ogden Tech, so the tech colleges, Salt Lake Community Tech Colleges. So right out of high school, out of a tech college, or somebody who has some experience coming on board. So, you know, definitely would love to be able to hire the experience, but we'll hire and train. That's kind of with me. You know, I came out of college, uh, first job, and they were able to train me. And again, these are not jobs where you get drafted. These Absolutely. are jobs. No, really, because I mean, that's a huge thing. I've thought about that so many times. You know, for a lot of the young couples, young moms, I think they would love to go work for somewhere like the Air Force, but the, the thought of being away from you know maybe that newborn baby for a few months or a year is just off the table completely absolutely so i came you know from, from cedar city graduated uh just moved up here with my family and i've enjoyed it immensely yeah you've been here a long time now yep, 23 years now do you call this home Central. now i do i yeah. live up in pleasant view and uh, we love it there's yeah. so much to do in the area so my family's from Panguitch. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so right there by Cedar City I as well. I absolutely know where that's at. I've been to Panguitch Lake fishing many times. <laughs> They're having their balloon festival today. <laughs> Not quite an air show. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, who, whoever scheduled that, I don't yeah. know. That's a tough, yeah. that's yeah. a tough, uh, tough beat. Yeah, right there, exactly. So, so, you know, I, we can obviously sense your passion for what you do and, uh, and what the PLC does for the mission here at Hill. And, of course, the greater Air Force uh, at large, but you know, when you think about your 23 years, uh, what what's the thing that you maybe think upon most fondly of your time so far? It's been the people I work with. Uh, I've gone through some hard things, and they've been there for me, so just like a second family, so it's definitely the people I work with. I, I will say uh, Hill Air Force Base has one of the best missions. We're the fighter depot. I mean, that, that is cool. We get to support the fighter aircraft uh, as well as the Air Force's nuclear mission. So, so it's the people, but uh, Hill Air Force Base is just a special place to work. And I think we support some of the uh, you know, best aircraft in the inventory, the fighter aircraft, what we see behind us. What the heck are we watching right <laughs> now? The shot. I'm just going to ask oh, you, Don, do I you put... 
Do you put engines on the back of vehicles? <laughs> no. <laughs> I did take automotive technology in high school, though, and in college, and so I'm a, I'm a car guy, and this is awesome. What is that? That is the Shockwave truck. I'm told it races airplanes. So three engines. Let's keep going. 376 oh. miles an hour. And it's hot. That's hot. <laughs> and not in a Paris Hilton way. I'm saying, like, actually hot on our backs. Oh, I love the smell of JP8. That, you know, it is just, it's awesome out here. It says uh, three jet engines, 36,000 pounds of horsepower. Hey, you're a, you're a math guy. What is, what is 36,000 pounds of horsepower really? Mean? I'm sure that puts you in the back of your seat. <laughs> <laughs> and Shockwave, the current world record holder for jet-powered trucks at 376 miles an hour. That is funny. But see, that's the beauty of the air show. There is something for everyone. We just went from watching an F-35 fighter to this. Yeah. So a father and son duo pilot this truck, Neil and Chris Darnell. They are, of course, veterans on the air show circuit. That's pretty cool stuff. And I think maybe you guys might need to add this to your inventory, John. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> At least that could be like the, you know, let, let's go take a break and drive shockwaves. So yeah, I that'd think be like, what's the ROI on that, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I think they've upgraded from our last show. It was like a regular size truck. That is a, a, a semi truck. Yeah, that is really, really cool. Uh, and again, like like you said, Debbie, that's just a, something cool that you you know you don't really see anywhere else uh, other than at at the one of these air shows. So I get a little stuff. giddy seeing that yeah, see the adrenaline.